Tonight on A Black Show, the House Majority Leader Eric Cantor loses his primary in spectacular fashion, and I deliver a PSA to America. Morgan Freeman does not speak for black people. No, really, stop telling me what Morgan Freeman said because I don't give a f All of this plus a sneak preview from my On Blackness interview with Dr. Anthea Butler. All of this on tonight's A Black Show. What is the composition of a black show? In and of itself, that ass so. Many questions infinitely bending and eventually breaking rules that define the status quo. Taking looks, drilling down in books, how far does it go? Turn it up and listen while we examine the facts, though. Strap with a heavyweight that make the screens crack, bro. Misunderstanding the last line is exactly why this show should be your pastime. Crime time exacto. Open up your mind, time. Team Black got our mean track record of being nice when tracking records on a media device, second to none. The docket is a bottle rocket on course to explode. With reasonable mind force plus fun We just begun Discussions over what should be done It's your choice, it's your voice Say it loud and don't fall back, yo This is your time to define It's a black show What's going on, folks? We are back This is a black show And I am your host, Elon James White Let's hit this docket, shall we? I think we've established this already But for those of you who might be a little bit slow on the uptake I'm black I'm not newly black I've been black for decades. And also, I'm not that new black that like Pharrell was talking about. Like, dude, I need you to just stop talking. On top of my long-standing membership in blackness, I also do this. I speak on issues of black identity, race, media representation, the owning and tell blah, blah, blah. I'm really black, y'all get it. And because of the role I have in this space, I get a lot of, let's say, pushback. How can racism still exist with Obama, Oprah, and Jay-Z, huh? You yell about racism, but black people kill more black people than white people do. If I had a white show, it'd be racist, right? I didn't own slaves. This Week in Blackness? Why can't there be a This Week in Whiteness? Morgan Freeman said Black History Month is ridiculous. Black History Month you find ridiculous. For those of us who discuss race and blackness in America, we get the Morgan Freeman snippet thrown in our face regularly. Black History Month you find ridiculous. It's used as a way to shut us up, because if Morgan Freeman said this, and he's super famous and we all like him, and then I'm not Morgan Freeman, then that means that I probably should just shut up, right? It's an annoying tactic often used to derail conversations around race. Here's an example. This thing is problematic for black people. I like this black insert cultural reference. Why does it have to be about black people or black cultural reference? If you guys want to be equal, maybe you should stop self-segregating, okay? Morgan Freeman said, now I have to explain why Morgan Freeman's words don't negate anything I'm saying and even more to the point that Morgan Freeman is actually wrong. I'm now no longer talking about the topic I initially brought up, and I have to now deal with this bootleg argument. But I hadn't had Morgan Freeman thrown in my face for like a couple of weeks now, and then this happened. If you're born in the U.S., it really doesn't matter the condition of your birth. What matters is what you inherit from your nurturing, from your environment, uh, whether or not you're going, if you, I mean, I'm just as, from the standpoint of having been born with little. But here we are. Right. So proof is in, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and here we sit at the dining table. But it's hard to, when you say that to some people, because they say, oh, there you go with a pull yourself up by the bootstraps thing, and you know, you're just being respectable. Not everybody can do that. Well, what the ever-loving, craptastic, crap biscuit deep fry on some, this cannot be life toasted croissants sprinkled with, why does Don Lemon still have a job, chives? The whole thing, especially the president and Democrats now are talking about income inequality, and that's basically what, you know, when you talk about the richest 85 people on the planet, right? Do you think that race plays a part in wealth dis distribution or either a mindset that you can't Today? or cannot? Yeah. No. You don't? No. I don't. I don't. I, you and I, we're proof. Why would race have anything to do with it? You know, I said, and it's probably getting me in trouble, but I said to some of my colleagues recently, said, so I know that it's an issue. But I've been, it seems like every single day on television I'm talking about race and it's because of the news cycle, it's in the news, but I'm so, sometimes I get so tired of talking about it, I want to I wanna just go, this is over, can we move on? And, and if you talk about it, it exists. A couple of things here, um, let's for a moment absorb this scene. Two 
rich dudes are sitting there talking about income inequality and they come to the conclusion that anything is possible if you believe in it? My chest is actually hurting. Um, is it possible to have a heart attack based on high doses of irony? How can you sit there and claim using your own successes to say that somehow race doesn't play a role in being successful and being wealthy in America? Your mere existence proves race doesn't play a role? With that type of magical logic fail, I'm pretty sure Morgan Freeman is only narrating that science show he has as opposed to understanding that science show he has. So I have a question. Um, what about the people that were just as talented as Morgan Freeman and Don Lemon and worked just as hard but weren't lucky enough to make it? Yeah, I said lucky. Now I know some of you might take offense to my labeling them as lucky. Some of you might think that I'm trying to deny the work they put in, that I'm hating on them. I'm not. I believe that a lot of folks who achieve success have worked their asses off. But I also believe that many, many people in general work their asses off. Side note, do you guys know that like I've been hit by like four cars in my life? Like four different cars. And a couple times I was actually hurled through the air and I've always survived with like nothing more than a little bit of soreness, you know? And my mama and my friends always like to point out that people die from being hit by cars all the time. Like other people get paralyzed and I mean, What's their problem? Getting hit by a car isn't a reason not to walk or live. I walk, I live after multiple hits, you know? Perhaps these people need to take advantage of being American and instead of complaining about how I'm paralyzed and I can't walk or I'm dead, maybe they should get up and be a survivor like me. That's idiotic, right? And that's the point. Are you going to pretend that folks who didn't survive car collisions are failures and they should be more like me? a freaking fluke. I say to people who say, well, I, I would like to have done so and so and so. So you could have done it. So, well, I couldn't get out of here. Man, the bus runs every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just take the bus. Obviously, that's all you need to do, you know? Want to escape your crushing poverty? Take a bus. Where is this bus going to? Hogwarts? Let me make this as crystal clear as I can. An anomaly does not establish a rule. A President Barack Obama does not mean racism is over. And Oprah does not mean that there isn't a wealth gap along racial lines. A Morgan Freeman means absolutely nothing in the face of millions still suffering and struggling. I grew up in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, New York in the late 80s, early 90s. That was in the middle of the crack epidemic. Gunshots were the norm. I was told that as a black male, I would most likely be dead or imprisoned by 21 years old. Now, in my 30s, I have built a career as a writer, a performer, a news analyst, and more. I run my own company and I have been featured all across mainstream media. My mom constantly tells me about how proud she is of me and the hard work that I've put in. This broadcast you're watching right now, I wrote and edited. I was the sound engineer. I built the TV studio this is being recorded in from scratch. I put in 15 hour days regularly, and I'm telling you, I got lucky. There were tons of kids like me back in Bed-Stuy. I had friends with so many dreams and so many plans and so much talent, and most of them didn't make it out. Now, what I'm supposed to say is how special I am and talk about all my hard work and dedication, but that would be disingenuous. That would be arrogant. That would imply that everyone else wasn't as quote unquote special as me. And that's nonsense. Just like what Morgan Freeman is saying. Upward mobility in America sucks. A recent study showed that if you're born at the bottom in the United States, you have an 8% chance of rising to the top, much lower than any other industrialized country. A Pew Research study shows that the wealth gap between whites and blacks is 12 to 1. But the actor dude and the problematic journalist says, just stop talking about it and making it a bigger deal than it actually is. Go fuck yourselves. I should have been nicer. I know I, I should have been nicer, but I don't have anything to be nicer with. Sorry. But why don't we calm it down a little bit? Why don't we do a little bit of a politricking? political upset for one of the most powerful Republicans in the country, Eric Cantor, the number two GOP lawmaker in the House, beaten in the primary by a Tea Party candidate. Eric Cantor last night was one of the most powerful politicians in America, one of the top Republicans in America. Listen to him here. You know, he just lost. 
In his primary concession speech, House Majority Leader Eric Cantor offered the political understatement of the year. Look, obviously we came up short. Eric Cantor. <laughs> oh, oh, Eric Cantor lost? <laughs> Eric Cantor? What ha happened? So Majority Leader Eric Cantor, the same dude who was a part of the secret meeting to make sure that President Obama was a one-term president, lost his house seat Tuesday to a Tea Party challenger. <laughs> you lost your you lost your election? A 34-point lead? Really? <laughs> 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 Here at This Week in Blackness, the media space that actually produces a black show, we do a lot of different podcasts that you can find over at Twib FM. You can go on iTunes, you can listen to all of the stuff that we're doing. One of the shows we do is called On Blackness, where I sit down with academics of color and discuss racial identity and so much more about how they got to where they are right now. This time I got lucky enough to sit down with Anthea Butler. She's a professor at UPenn and I find her amazing. So check out our little back and forth about what is exactly blackness. The first thing I have to ask you uh, is the first thing I ask everyone. Can you define blackness? Realness truth, boldness, um, tenacity. How many more adjectives do you want me to come up with? I don't know, I thought, I, I thought, yeah. I thought you were blackness preaching. Is not, let me put it like this. Blackness is not what I saw in the Seattle Symphony playing Sir Mix-a-Lot, Baby Got Back with White Girls Dancing. That ain't blackness. <laughs> Uh, so I understand what you're saying. Like, so it's a lot of uh, 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 adjectives here, but like exactly if you were to define, if someone said define blackness, like just like define it, like is it just simply a description? Uh, like like you're black if you are all of those uh, those definitions or those no, uh, adjectives no, you just used? No, I, I was sort of I was sort of being funny, but I think, you know, this the problem with defining blackness is this. I mean, you, you're talking to somebody who's a historian. So I'm going to say, are we defining blackness in terms of phenotype? Are you... Uh, you know, a quadroon, an octoroon, all these other things that people used to call each other if you had a little bit of white in you. You know, all of us, you know, have some black in us. So they used to say in the South, if you shook somebody's family tree, a black person was going to fall down. <laughs> so, I mean, in a sense, I mean, I think blackness is not just about skin color, but it's, a, it's an attitude. It's about how you are and if, you, if you're down for your people or not. I mean, I think that's a real important, you know, emphasis. I couldn't say, for instance, that you know some you know some black republicans who like to push themselves in a certain kind of way would be you know know what blackness is okay okay you so have I, to know what I, I immediately is. i immediately have to uh, to push back just a little bit on uh, on this yes, so, so like why? so you say uh that um that so basically blackness has a direct connection to community so you can't so if you, so are you not black if you don't have that connection to the community or that you're not actively uh, attempting to, I guess, uplift I or at least not crap on it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think everybody has a different kind of place in the community. Mm -hmm. I don't think that everybody understands the community. That is a very different thing. I mean, I, I see this a lot when I talk to students about this. I mean, I wouldn't say that you're not, you know, you're not black. What I would say is, is that you've had a different experience of being a black person in America. And that's a different kind of thing. So if you got raised in the suburbs and you went to a nice, you know, prep school and you did all this stuff, you've got to think about some other things that other people have experienced. It's not that your experience is in any di is, is better or different than somebody else's. It's just that you need to encompass some of this. For me, I, I'm just going to say this personally as a historian, that the way that I would define it is somebody who is, you know, a race person, somebody who is who is for their people someone who is connected to the community in some kind of way, someone who cares about the lives of black people and, and what they're doing and, and how they're doing it and, and expresses that in their everyday life. So, 
that's a different kind of way to think about it, perhaps. But it definitely, it definitely is. There's, we, we've gotten a lot of different, uh, uh, I guess, responses in in this thing. Like we uh, from uh, like uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Harris Perry pointed out, like like it, it's political. Like why are you claiming blackness in the first mm-hmm. place? Uh, uh, others uh, have uh, spoken about uh, just like like is it is it just uh, simply is it the uh, speaking of it from the construct of race in general in America? Like yeah. is that where it, it comes from? So that's why I like to ask because this is, is it's something that I feel as if is. In the discussion around blackness, the question about what is black always seems to be like like varied and different across whoever yeah. you ask, which then impl- the, to me uh, begs the question, then can it be defined at all if we all have these really, really strong different uh, 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 definitions or yeah. can it be defined by a certain space and other folks have to fall into that space? Like I so said, that's yeah. why I ask. Yeah, no, I think, I, I mean, I think you have a point. I, I suppose that I think about it, and this is, I will say that this is from being at Penn because I'm not just in religious studies, I'm also in Africana studies. So I think about, you know, the African diaspora, obviously. So I mean, people across the diaspora have different experiences. We have, you know, a connection to Africa, we either African descent or, uh, you know, because of slavery or whatever you want to define that. So I think when I think about blackness sometimes, I think about it in a, in a very different space than I think about, you know, somebody who is part of the African diaspora. I think about blackness as being, you know, a, a sort of a state of mind depending on where you are and how you define that and what time period we're even talking about. Because what blackness is in 2014 is not what blackness was in 1968, right? Right. Okay. Well, so I mean, well, uh, 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 actually, I take that back. I, I, I said right uh, too fast. I was just like, yes, Dr. Butler. But wait. <laughs> I, yeah, like, but wait. I mean, think about it. I mean, for some people, it's not the same thing. Right. Like, because I mean, uh, in nineteen um, in nineteen sixties, I mean, black. I mean, black. There was even a lot of different shades of black, even during the uh, during the sixties. There were those who were out there uh, fighting the power. There were those who were marching. There was those who were the Panthers, mm-hmm. and then, then there were those who yep. wanted to do nothing but not rock the boat. Right. Yeah, no, and exactly. so then so then the question becomes, is are, are the people like, for instance, when uh, when uh, what's his name? Uh, when Lawrence uh, uh, Lawrence O'Donnell got really froggy about um, about Herman Cain uh, yeah. and not being a part of the civil rights movement. I remember uh, a lot of folks, including me, were like, whoa, fall back. You can't really yell at people because being a part of the civil rights movement, there was it was it was a it wasn't an easy task. Like you, you were doing yeah. stuff and your your livelihood, your life was on the line in the 60s mm-hmm. at times. So you can't really fight people about, I guess, whether or not they were fighting for justice. So then at that point, were those people not being black? You know, I'm just gonna agree with Lawrence on this one. I'm sorry, I just don't think Herman Cain is black no way, so do you <gasps> Dr. <Doctor, laughs> Dr. Butler! Are you yeah, black checking, are you black checking Herman Cain? say it, I'm going to say it. I, I just think Mr. 999 ain't really a black man, but that's just me. But let Why? me say this. But because, I mean, just that, that's, I, all I can remember is the singing he did during that election. And I was just like, man, that's kind of like the Coon Show. But can you not be, okay, like, and just like, uh, I mean, to be frank here. You can't be black. I mean, you can't be phenotypically black, but it is your soul black. <laughs> Okay, th- that I mean that becomes a, 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 another even another big question. Like like like, how do you define uh, the color of someone's yeah, soul? Yeah. Well, actually, because here, here's the thing. I, let me let me make this alive for you. This will make it easier for you. Okay? okay. There are some people who are born black, and 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 they know and everything else. But it's easier to live in a white culture and uh, take on white cultural a- aspects or take on these aspects. Where we say, like these tea parties will say, "Well, I don't see race. We're just Americans, and we're just, you know, we're just people. We're just humans, and all this stuff." But the reality is, is that that's not really true. And so, you know, where where you decide to live culturally is the space in which you, who you are. So, if you decide to live in blackness, I think that has certain definitions to it. If you decide to live in whiteness as a black man, then you decide to live a certain kind of way. And that makes may make your life easier, but it also means that you do things like what Herman Cain did, which is you just break out in song, like you you know. So uh, so so, Diddy. so my question uh, is then so is are you saying that basically uh like, so it starts out with like you obviously you're born you're born uh, you can be born black uh, phenotypically so like 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 you have two black parents or a black parent yeah. depending on the rules because that's another thing like if you have mm-hmm. one half black parent or and a black parent like do you are mm-hmm. you black now or is is yeah. is that but then now you're saying that even if you were born into blackness you can then 
I guess, give up your blackness, depending on well, what yes, you do. You can. And did you pay attention to what happened this week with the news? All these people who are changing their race on the census report. Right. So, you know, we have black people who say, I, this used to happen to me a lot when I was a kid. I didn't have the afro. I had long, I had straight long hair. Because mm -hmm. my mother pressed my hair. And they would go, oh, you must have Indian in you or something. And that would automatically take me out of the realm of blackness into something else. And so it, it had to have, I had to have something else to make me who I am. Now, I did. But I chose to be called black. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not. It's this thing that you, you know people can take on and put off at will. And blackness doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's the phenotype. It could mean about behavior, about your ideas, your <clears throat> your uh, mindset about things. And so, just like Harmon Cain is, you know, phenotypically a black man, I would say to you that his concerns are not the concerns of what um, African Americans in the civil rights movement wanted to do. He felt like he needed to go do his education and all that. That's fine. But has he ever shown himself to be down? I don't know. So then, so then what you're, the art, I guess, uh, the kind of the art, it sounds like the argument you're making is that at a certain point that you, like, you can be born into quote unquote blackness, but at a certain point, there's a show and prove moment of, of blackness? Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's not a show and prove moment because who's, you know, Who's the judges? I mean, we all judge differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's a moment in which you have to decide where your allegiances lie and where you're going to live culturally. Mm -hmm. I so, mean, look, tomorrow I could get up and go get me some weave hair, go get me some contacts. I could start to speak very properly and not say anything and try to deny everything about my body and go, you know, you know go lose some weight and become a stick and do all these other things and try to be, try to blend in with a certain kind of cultural construct. I could do that. But I choose not to. But now, if you did, and it, but if if you did choose to uh, do that, let, let's say you did you did decide to go along with that particular uh, construct, that particular uh, ideal of beauty, you would you then argue that person is has left blackness, or they are no longer, or I they would argue that they have left cultural blackness. Going on, folks. We're back. This is Elon James White. I am joined by Captain Lieutenant General Professor. On occasion, he is some sort of doctor. We have Aaron Rand Freeman, sir. That's a pleasure to be on the show, and thanks everyone for watching. Excellent. Also with us, we have uh, the founder of the Angry Black Lady Chronicles. She's angry. She's black. She's also a lady. We have Amani Gandhi, ma'am. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for watching. Excellent. Why don't we hit this docket? Not unlike some sort of boss status, if you will, madam. Well. A woman was found dead in her prison cell. No, I don't want this docket. I want a new one. But this is the docket we have. You gotta go, you gotta do a show with the docket that you have, not the docket that you want. <sighs> Continue. Am I right? I'm right. Go for it. A woman was found dead in her prison cell in Berks County, Pennsylvania, after being sentenced to 48 hours in jail for not paying a truancy fine for her child. Apparently, since 1999, Pennsylvania, in an effort to make to force kids to go to school and to compel parents to make sure that their kids actually attend school. If your kid's absent from school too many times, they will they will force the child to go to a truancy court hearing. If you miss your truancy court hearing or even if you attend your truancy court hearings, you will accumulate fines. This woman accumulated two thousand dollars in fines, submitted herself to jail and then died in jail. Yeah, this is horrendous. And you know the thing that I'm thinking about, Aaron? God forbid this rule was in New York. My mom would have been under the prison. <laughs> like, this is a terrible, terrible, terrible law. I understand why it's implemented. I feel like they feel like this is, the, this is how they can, I guess, attempt to, like, deal with uh, 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 or curtail uh, truancy. But you cannot put people in that position because sometimes parents cannot control my mom and everyone has listened to the show. People know how my mom is. I've told stories about it. My mom was gangster. My mom was strict. It's all get out. And she could not control whether or not I was in school or not. And she tried. I assure you there was all sorts of plots and schemes between me and her about me being at school and her or, or, or me not being at school. I used to hide in my closet 
at home. I would say goodbye, go down the stairs, sneak back up the stairs. I had a, uh, my, uh, my room had its own door to the hallway. I would go inside my room quietly, like, 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 like freaking on Bugs Bunny and like, doom, 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 doom. and like, like, I was trying to get to the, to the thing, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. and I would go in my closet, cover myself in my dirty clothes <laughs> that was in the closet. Uh, so if she opened my door, she would not see me in the room so that she would leave for work and I would be free. <laughs> This is what I've, I've, I've done something. There was a, 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 a crawl space above my room, uh, that was, that we used to go to the roof, uh, that was a crawl space and then a ladder that goes to the roof. I would climb up to the ladder, go inside the crawl space, hang out there while my mom leaves and then come back down and go back. Like you can't, like, imagine if they were charging. My mom would have owed millions of dollars. I skipped a school year one time. <laughs> How did you, what? I skipped the school year. I was like, I didn't deal well with school. <laughs> so Apparently not. I didn't. I didn't deal well with school. I mean, no, I skipped the school. I skipped the. Uh, uh, it was the school year happened by accident. I skipped the semester uh, because I was just hating everyone there. And then they put me in special ed because they were like, "Well, he skipped the semester of school, so he must be special education t- kid." I, I went back that uh, beginning of that semester. I showed up to classes, realized I was a special ed, and was like, "Oh hell no." I'm not doing this. <laughs> and I skipped the I skipped the next year of school. And but my teachers were all like, there's no reason he I, yeah, there's no don't put him here. And they just passed me all all this way. Like just like, no, yes, pass. And next year I was in regular classes and then I went to class sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. I wasn't good. Like I was not like I wasn't good with the the day to day. Like I like we all talk about my ADD. I, that was real for me. And like I could not just be in class and then like being yelled at like, did you do your report? And of course I didn't do a report. I forgot there was a report. <laughs> And people mad at me, and so, but yeah, no, this is this is I just my brain just like thinks about parents who who would try. My mom worked at one point two different jobs. My mom would work fifteen hour days on occasion. She could not control whether or not I was at school. But now we're gonna put people in prison, find them thousand dollars. This is like they were saying it's basically a debtor's prison. Yeah, because like if you can't, like you end up in prison because you don't can't pay these bills that you didn't even accumulate. Yeah, your kid did. Yep. Come on. And then she died. She died. And Pennsylvania, this one county, Berks County, Pennsylvania, which is where Redding is located, Redding, Pennsylvania, for all you Pennsylvania fans out there. <laughs> More than 1,600 people since 1999 have been jailed for not paying truancy fines. How it's, does this make sense? It's madness. This is not a, This is not the method. Like, 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 <laughs> just, like, forcing people to pay you money, is this helping? I don't think this is helping. They're basically, basically, what I'm thinking is that, one... You have cost some kids some serious ass whoopings. <laughs> like, like not everybody is that is, is like, hey man, I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't discipline that way. I don't discipline that way. And all of a sudden, you see that you have a bill for eight hundred dollars that you don't have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not. I, I'm, yes, you should. You should be reasonable. You don't like hitting kids. I understand that, but let's also deal with in the reality of that some people discipline their children that way and being cost $800 for not doing what you, that is a good way to get someone an ass whooping. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hit my kid, but it would have an economic effect on Christmas and their birthday. So, you <laughs> oh, know, there'd dear. be a thing, you know, they, they, they have, they'd have to get me presents for their birthday to compensate for the $900 I just had to throw because they like to play Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah. Well, folks, this was our trial run here at Free Speech TV. Hopefully you'll see us again real soon. Remember to send in feedback at a black show at freespeech.org to let us know that you want us to stay around, you know? Thanks to everyone who's been a part of this project so far. You guys have been great, and this has been an amazing experience. Also, remember, you can always swing by twib.fm to listen to us on a regular basis when we're doing our podcast thing, even when we're not on air. Thanks, everyone, everyone for watching. Have a pleasant evening. What's going on, folks? This is Elon James White. And you might not have known this, but Free Speech TV is actually having a fundraising drive right now. Free Speech TV is probably one of the only places that you would see a show like a black show. So if you have a few bucks and you believe in a progressive space like Free Speech TV, it might be time to throw a little dough their way. Hopefully you can look into your heart and throw something towards Free Speech.